All of the negative health effects connected with getting older, loss of mobility, weakening of the bones, hormone dysfunction, mitochondrial dysfunction, in other words, low energy, insulin insensitivity or blood sugar issues, all of these, all of them are directly combated with one form of exercise above all others, strength training. Strength training is literally the closest you can get to the fountain of youth. If you're getting older and you want to prevent all those negative things, go lift weights. Nothing will do you better. Uh, read this interesting study on older people and strength training. You guys want to hear some of the results? Yeah. That'll blow your mind. I mean, I, so. Is this it's new a, or is it you just found it? No, it's a new it? one. Oh, it's new. Now you guys. These studies keep coming out. You guys know this. Uh, you know, so you're not going to be surprised by this, but a lot of people will be surprised by this because I think the, a lot of people, ex they accept the myth that as you get older, it's just like, oh, it's just, this is what happens. Yeah. You know, you're going to feel like crap or whatever. I, at one point trained a lot of people in advanced age, I'd say the back half of my career. And uh, I loved it because it was so, it was, everybody was always mind blown when they'd see what happened to themselves and their family members and all that. But anyway, here's a study. They took a group of men between 60 and 75. Okay, so advanced age. Uh, and they trained them for 16 weeks doing traditional strength training. It, now, it said high-intensity strength training, but it wasn't training to failure. It was just like traditional strength training. After less than four months of training, okay, they the body their body fat percentage dropped by three percentage points. By the way, there was no dietary interventions whatsoever. Hmm. So they didn't change their diet at all. They lost 3% body fat. Their muscle strength increased from 50 to 80%, so a 30% increase in muscle strength, and everybody's VO2 max dramatically improved. Wow. Just from no 16 weeks. No cardio in their age. That's it. Oh, wow. That's it. It was and a couple they, days a week of strength wow. training. Wow. Did they have any previous experience? Or no. It was just kind of, yeah. Nope. nope. Wow. Just took the average you know, person and had them lift weights in that age group. Now, that's a you know, yeah. keep that in mind. You're 70 years old. You go, and of course you have to do this appropriately and properly. So, um, you know, strength training, like any form of exercise or anything, you got to do it right, right? So they were obviously being monitored uh, on how to do proper technique and form and what the right intensity and weight was and all that stuff. Yeah. But, you know, you're a seven-year-old. I don't think, I think most seven-year-olds, unless they've done this before, would not expect in 16 weeks. They don't think they're going to get progress like that. They don't think they're going to build 30%. Yeah, that's a lot. More strength. Yeah. In in sixteen weeks, or lose three percent body fat. Yeah. I bet you without changing your diet, people would think like five, maybe like two to five percent. You know, change. Yeah, exactly. Like thirty is ridiculous. And that's I'm going to tell you this right now. When I trained older people or people in the age group, that those first you of course you got stronger, you saw things in the first four months, but it got faster and faster because it takes you know three to six months just to start to develop develop the skill acquisition required to do some of the most effective exercises. So like some of the exercises that I would do with someone who's 68, we're not we're not able to do a bench press or a barbell squat or a deadlift. We're doing like sit down stand up off of a chair. I'm having them, you know, do some like super elevated push-ups off of an elevated bar almost like you're doing them off a wall. We're doing maybe cable rows, probably band rows. Yeah. We're doing, you know, static uh, stability like type exercises. Rows, yeah. I haven't even got them to the part yet where we're doing the most effective yeah. you know, strength. Squatting, deadlifting, overhead pressing, big weight. No. And then the ones that I did train for years, you know, after training with them, you know, about moving into like, you know, eight, nine, 10, 11 months. Then we start doing like I'd have them pull a bar off of the rack, you know, so we can start practicing things like a deadlift. We start squatting, maybe holding dumbbells. And at some point, I'd have them hold a bar across the, the front of their shoulders because that's easier to do than a back squat. And then you'd see this, what, what they said, this 30% increase in strength. Oh, it would just accelerate. And then it would just get crazy. Yeah. And they'd just be blown away. And I used to love it because their family members would be the ones to call me. Their, their kids would always call me up and be like, dude, I don't know what you're doing to my mom, but she's like, yeah. she's on fire. Or, you know, my dad's like, yeah, yeah. I have, you know, he mo I remember one guy I trained, he was 73 retired anesthesiologist, super smart guy, very sharp still. Uh, in fact, he was his, his sense of humor was so dark. I was like almost embarrassed. Hope nobody heard half the jokes he would say. But I remember his, his, uh, his daughter called me and said, well, I don't know what you're doing with my dad. We are never going to stop him training with you. He mowed his own lawn. 
She's like, he hasn't mowed his lawn in like 15 years. He actually went outside and decided to mow his own lawn. Yeah. How crazy is that? <laughs> yeah, right? Crazy. But all those things are are um, directly combated with uh, with strength training. Um, and I wish people knew this. I wish they knew that that fountain of youth yeah. actually existed. Aging, it's, it's just that it's it's a long period of, of these habits that you accumulate. And it's like, um, whether or not they're beneficial or they're not, um, you know, beneficial, it's, that's what you're going to feel going on into, you know, the, the later years. And, and so to, to be able to strength train and to, to sort of slow that process down and maintain like able strength, um, I mean, that's everything it's, it's really isn't like, oh no, that's just happened to me. Like people think like aging, it's just like all of a sudden I just get all these pains like automatically. Yeah. I wish. So here's your evidence for people kind of who are like, oh, is this really, would this be me? I've used this example before, but I think it illustrates it beautifully. Right. So if you were to picture the typical 25 year old kid and then put them next to a 25 year old kid that like works out four days a week. And you had them stand next to each other. Yeah, mild difference. With the shirts off, right? Yeah. Had them do things outside, had them be active. I mean, you could tell a difference. Oh, that, that person works out and that person doesn't. Take a 75-year-old that exercises consistently and has been for years and have them stand next to your typical 75-year-old. The it, It's so drastically different. Yeah. It's so different that the difference isn't, oh, that one looks like they work out and the other one doesn't. It's literally that one needs assisted living or help is on 15 different medications. Yep. And that person's life has basically not changed. They are doing everything they were, they were doing before. They look decades younger, yeah. decades, yeah. Mm -hmm. not like a little bit. It's like decades of a difference. Yeah. It's massive. You it's know, so big. What's up everybody. Today's giveaway is the super bundle. Here's how you can win it. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, you get the super bundle. Also, trainers and coaches, we finally have launched Mind Pump's trainer course. The first time ever, we have put together something for trainers and coaches, teaching you how to build a more successful business. There's over 40 hours of videos in there. You get free Maps Prime and Prime Pro and much more. You get $200 off. You get to go in a group that's specifically, it's a private group for trainers and coaches. We'll be in there once a month teaching people things. It's incredible. It's a brand new launch. It's on sale. Check that out. Also, we put together some workout program bundles, which are, which are also discounted. We have the new to weightlifting bundle. We have the body transformation bundle. We have the new year extreme intensity bundle and the body transformation bundle 2.0. Look, if you want to find out about the coaching program or any of those bundles of workout programs, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. We had, um, I wanted you, you brought up like uh, talking about advanced age clients and you know, and you're not even uh, squatting or deadlifting or doing some of the big movements that you reap the most benefits from. And you reminded me of something that I wanted to address on the podcast together uh, because I know it's it's I know it's going to create conversation on in our forum and and from people that listen to us. Um, Doug, did the is Brian Kula's episode live or will it be live when this is this is up? I I don't think so. Not yet. No. Okay, so that's cool. We could talk about it beforehand though, because I want to I want to address it anyways because I know we're going to get stuff. Uh, what a great interview. First of all, yeah, it was so a fun. great conversation. Yeah. Uh, brilliant, brilliant coach. I think all of us really, really enjoyed that, but he said something on there that I know that people are going to think is a uh, counter to something that we would say. Although, oh yeah. And, uh, he, he talked about, um, if he had the option, he would not backload or, uh, uh not do uh, oh, backloaded yeah. squats at all mm -hmm. yeah. in uh, a, a program for his athletes. And, that's not something that I think that you, people would assume that we would necessarily agree with because we're, we promote squatting and deadlifting so much and, and, and acquiring that skill and how valuable and the biggest bang for your buck, even at the athletic level, right? We talk about like when you're a young athlete and you're, you know, you're just getting into weight training and you're just getting into your sport, um, you know, getting a good squat or a deadlift. Uh, is one of the best things that you go, can do to transfer over to your sport. And then we have this great uh, coach or trainer that comes on and says like, oh, he, you know, he would eliminate that from his program. And so yet I think we all agree with what he said. I think it's important that we make clear to the audience when they get a chance to listen to it, what, uh, yeah. what, 
what we agree with, and even though you hear us talk and promote squats, what, why is that? Why is that different? You know, like how does that? Well, it's uh, it high, it um it mirrors what some studies will show, where they'll take a a twelve week study, they'll take an untrained group of people, typically college aged males, but let's just say whatever ungroup untrained group of people, and they'll compare a leg press to a barbell back squat in a let's say twelve week period, which one builds more muscle. And in some of those studies, the leg press will win. And so everybody goes, oh, it's leg press is much more effective. But the reason why those studies show that is because the skill acquisition required to do yeah. a proper barbell squat, it takes a lot longer than leg press. I can take the average person off the street and within four workouts, they're going to leg press fine. The average person off the street is going to take me months of work, of mobility, because it's just such a, it's a more challenging exercise to do a barbell squat. There's a lot of things, a lot more things that are involved. So how does this, so in other words, you're not going to see the benefits of the barbell squat start to beat the leg press until later. And then it will, it'll crush it. Now, how does this connect it to what he was doing? Well, when you're a, a tra when you coach athletes and you got to get them ready for a season and you're watching them work out, you're like, I got to do the exercise. that's going to get me the fastest results and the most effective results for this time period. And if it's, if the skill acquisition required or what's going to take to get them to squat well, mm -hmm. is going to take up all that time. I'm not worse. I'm not gonna waste my, my time doing it. So that was one of the reasons that yeah. was one of the main reasons. And that's why I wanted to bring it up because I think that so many people will hear the message and, and misinterpret uh, what he's saying and what we say, which is that the, it'll be like, oh, he doesn't think squats are good and you guys think squats. And it's like, no, it's not that simple. No. It's you have to really pay attention to what he's saying. It's like, I've got a, a limited time. And what you're assuming when he says that too is you, you're assuming that. So he's assessed this kid and the kid doesn't, he's never squatted before or doesn't have a good squat. Therefore, I don't even want to mess with yeah. that. I don't have the time frame. Yeah. And we did get a chance, I believe, to talk to him about it. If not, I know we did an off air. Is like, now if a kid is got a good squat, he can already, use it. He's gonna, he can use it. Yeah. And it and be very well because he's already acquired that skill and he can reap a lot of benefits from it. And plus, too, and I don't know if it came across, but like in multiple other interviews he's had, like he talks about like using it as a foundational base for like a, yes. a, an upcoming athlete. And like that's that's the biggest difference, right? Like it is, it is a part of the overall strength conversation. And this is something that, you know, is a skill you need to acquire. But then like moving forward in terms of like your specific sport in you, you start to kind of evaluate them in terms of then like focusing more on that skill or focusing on the things that move the needle the most and generate the most uh, force and power where you want to generate the most force and power. And also, uh, too, like uh, risk reward, like you, in terms of then the athlete's longevity in the sport. Yeah, look, uh, if you, you buy a bunch of regular cars off the lot and you want to make them faster as fast as possible. You, make, you, you give them big engines. Go give me a Formula One car. Tell me to make it faster. Throwing a bigger engine in there is going to make it not, not in fact, probably not even work. Right. Okay. It's going to get much more detailed and intricate. He's working with high, high level athletes. Uh, you know, he's like, I'm not trying to build a base of strength here with these guys. They got them. They already yeah. got it. Yeah. I'm trying to look at the, the fine tuning. Here, here's another example. If you gave me a, a boxer and you said he's going to do an MMA fight in 10 weeks. We, but so in other words, he's going to be fighting people that know how to grapple and do jujitsu. All he does is know how to box. Right. I'm not going to try and make him a jujitsu master in, in, right, right. in 10 weeks. He's going to get his ass kicked. Right. All I'm going to do is I'm going to teach him how to sprawl. We're going to focus on how to not go to the ground because if you go to the ground, you're dead. Yeah. So let's just focus all of our attention on that right now because that's all we got. We only got 10 weeks. Yeah, yeah. And so that's basically you know, the breakdown or rather the rundown. Yeah, I just I wanted to address it before it came up because I know people are going to hear that good. episode yeah, and, then, and you know what's going to happen is people are going to think that we disagree. And this is a classic example too of what happens so much on the internet, right? How many, how many times have we been tagged in something that one of our friends or peers is talking about and be like, well, see what he says. And it's mm -hmm. like, well, <laughs> context matters. Like it's not it, 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 in when we're, when we're designing something as far as a, you know, an exercise program, a diet, a, reg, a training regimen for someone getting ready for a sport. There's so many moving variables that you can't just take these blanket statements that we say, or anybody else says and be like, Oh, this is the end all be all. And it's like, actually we totally agree. Look, you have to, you have to, you have to take the, the context. Look, Adam, if, if somebody hired you and said, look, I don't care about anything else. I just want to get as lean as possible in 12 weeks. I don't care about anything else. Just get me as lean as possible in 12 weeks versus a person hires you and is like, I want to get lean. I want to stay lean for the rest of my life. Right. Totally different approach. Yeah, right. Completely different conversation. Completely different conversation. Right, Getting right. you as lean as possible in 12 weeks 
is I'm going to do a lot of stuff that I know is not going to yeah. stick. You're going to gain the weight back. It's not yeah. going to be the best thing, whatever. But that's what you want. Sure, that's what we're going to give you. Right, right. And who are we communicating to? I'm not communicating. We're talking to people who, look, the goal is to get people to do this forever. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to get you to, to perform for a season and then come flat of shape or yourself or whatever. Optimize the individual. Yeah. It's so not, not the general, like everything. That's the thing. All these camps, they just, they feed off of generalities. And, yeah. and you know, to get into the nuance is always that. That's the, that's what a real good trainer, a good but, coach is going to get into that domain. But with, the, with, you know, to go back to like aging, like we're, we're probably a decade away from uh, the standard, the standard care when it comes to improving the health through non-medical intervention ways of, of people as they get older is going to be strength training. It's not going to be the treadmill. It's not going to be, it's going to be. I was going to ask you if you thought, if you believe that still or not. hundred like, percent. Cause sometimes like hundred percent, sometimes I wonder if it's just our, we're in our own little bubble, you know, in well, our, you know why our own I, little echo chamber. You know right? why I say that the data now is so, is becoming so um, common in the medical sphere that now I'm seeing doctors talk about it this way. Well, what gives me hope is I go to the grocery store and I see in the tabloids now, like uh, talking about strength training yes. and how to build muscle. And it's not like cardio driven uh, covers. Oh, interesting. Which I thought was an interesting shift, uh, which I hadn't seen before. So. Is that, are you talking about the Time Magazine one? I saw the same There's thing. There's one, yeah, for there. There's also one for, I don't know, some oxygen or, you know, one of those mm-hmm. magazines that yeah. are you know, usually full <laughs> of crap. Uh, but yeah, so it, it, at least like some of the. Um, sort of mainstream like legacy stuff is kind of moving that direction. Who knows? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think I think we're we're getting there. We're we're about a decade away. It's going to be. You know why the 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 return for the time invested is so. Um, it, it, you can't beat it. You know, like if you took, if you gave me a care home, uh, you know, with elderly. Uh, and you said, you know, what, what's one thing we could do that, you know, we're not going to give you much time. We're going to give you 45 minutes a week with them. You're just going to have 45 minutes a week with them. That's it. Once a week. It's like, well, we're going to do strength training. I need some bands and I need some chairs and that's it. And that's all we're going to do 45 minutes a week. There's no other activity I could do with them for 45 minutes that would reap, that would come even close to the benefits that they would get from literally 45 minutes of strength training once yeah. a week. Yeah. In fact, that was how be I trained. Effective, be efficient. That know? was the average client that I had at that age group. They would come in and it, it, was, it was typically about 45 minutes. Uh, it would be like 15 minutes of warming up, doing things. And like maybe, you know, we do like three exercises once a week. Yeah. And that was it. And everybody's minds would get blown on how awesome it was. Oh, yeah. Really neat. yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to hear about, uh, you had like a party or something you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, when, <what's, laughs> I want to hear all about this, Justin. It was, it was nuts. Yeah, Justin was, was hosting madness. a WrestleMania at his <laughs> house. <laughs> Wait, what is it? So what was happening? So my, yeah, uh, Everett, his birthday party, we had to like host it because um, his actual birthday is going to, we're going to be in Texas for his like gymnastic tournament. And so we're like, ah, we got to do some kind of, party you know with your friends and so like courtney and i kind of decided well we can have the kids over and they'll like kind of muck out on video game hang out do a sleepover do all that kind of thing uh and then the next day we would do the um a ropes course that actually was near my old house but like it was like it looked like a lot of fun and so we kind of set all that up but the the sleepover it, yeah so we we had these kids were just and I forgot, I guess, what it's like to be, like, really excited and, like, energetic as, like, a 10, 11-year-old boy. You know, like, they were, like, that energy was, like, a lot. It was <laughs> Bro, so much. They run like, I did reactors. not know what to do with this energy. <laughs> yeah. It was, like, six boys, you know, just, like, running. Like, they didn't just stop. Like, everywhere they go, if they had to go find something, they'd just run and go get it. Like, ah! <laughs> this one kid just would scream. And he just, like, I'm, like... <laughs> Stop screaming. He's just, ah! yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no, like, let's not do You're that. Like, it's like, that? I seriously, like, like it, it would send shockwaves down. Like Courtney and I would just be like this, just huddled over in the corner. <laughs> you couldn't hide. Uh, and it was just like madness. Right. And um, at this one point, I'm trying not to like, you know, throw this kid under the bus or anything, but like it, great kid. He just, um, we, we noticed something like there was something a little off. And, uh, one of those kids was like wearing the VR goggles and, you know, so I had all these things set up so they could play, have little stations and like, you know, do their thing. And he was kind of by himself playing on, on the Oculus. And I walked by and I was like, I was like, did somebody step in something? Like, it's in, 
And like, I kind of walked by and like, ah, you know, that, that was, I, I definitely smell something like, and I was like, Courtney, like, you know, you might want to do a little walk around and like, kind of, and like, dude, this kid shit his pants. Whoa. <laughs> he, we were just like, oh no. Did he know? Uh, I think I, I don't know if how you don't know. Well, here's the you, thing. It's like know. well, if he's still playing, this used to happen. And and, and again, like Dude, I don't know what wait, hold on, the phenomenon. This, maybe this used to happen. I mean, I've it's happened to me before. Like, so, I, so <laughs> yeah, let's all, hey, real quick. I had to throw away. You know, let's all be cool. There, come on, you tell pants. me there, there's, there's a thing pants. called. I want to say it's called Cornispa. C o c o r c o r n e s p i or something like that. It's a it's a condition. That's related to trauma. I suffer from this. So after my dad's suicide, oh, come on, bro, you gonna make it. I'm not trying to make feel it, bro, I'm not being sad about yeah, it. No. So I'm, be, I'm trying to be delicate, yeah. you know. Okay, so so listen, so uh, <laughs> I'm I'm eight years old, and then all of a sudden, I eight nine years old, I I start shitting my pants, and what it is is that I hold it and hold it and hold mm -hmm. it and don't go to the restroom. Uh -huh. Never never did that before. Now I don't know, like as as a kid, I'm not processing really what I'm doing, but I'm embarrassed as fuck because I'm at an age where that doesn't happen anymore. So I'm like, and you probably bro, people so I get mad at you about it. Oh yeah, no, my mom beat the shit out of me over, oh. it, and she didn't even know what it was, oh, what it was connected brutal. to later on. It wasn't until later that they tell me that, and so it's it's a lot of times directly. Maybe did you find it yet for me, Doug? Yeah, I think it's called encopresis. Yeah, encopresis. That's what it is. Okay, and and that's it's terrible. It's man. connected to trauma. And and it's like the kids, the kid is. I so kind of just I, hold it, hold it. Yeah, hold you just it. hold it, hold it, hold it, and then it happens. And then then you find yourself in the situation where you're like, you're trying to hide it. So, now, I, remember, what is so it? I remember hiding like my shit, my underwear, and fucking people's houses, and trying to flush it down a toilet, and the oh toilet overflowing. Like, oh yeah, like as a kid at that yeah, age, so there's a little, yeah, that's there's terrible. A, there's a little bit of that. Oh, like, I feel bad, dude. So so. Is it because he's super excited? I I think it was because like every all the kids were so excited and like he just didn't even pay attention to his body, you know, uh, signals with that. And so it was at a point where he was just like kind of I think it happened. He was still so enamored with the game and all this. And so anyway, so this puts us in a bit of a conundrum, right? So I was like, we got to figure this out so he doesn't get embarrassed by all the other all the other kids didn't know any of this was going down. Right? Oh, yeah, you so we had like a him. covert operation. It was like, Courtney and I were just like locking. We're like, hey, we got to figure this out. And we're like Rochambeau to see who's going to like, you know, ask him like, hey, bud, you know, like and try and like address it. Right. Yeah. And I was like, no, no, no. I was like, we got to th think of something else. And so I was like, okay, so I lost the Rochambeau. I got to come up with a plan. So I was like, okay, here's what we're going to do. Um, it's getting late. Like we're, they'd already eaten and everything. And like, I was like, okay, they're all just kind of running around. I'm going to stop what everybody's doing and, and make them all like individually go put their jammies on and just kind of like coordinate it. Like all these other kids first and then this, and then, and so then I got to him like, Hey, go put your jammies on. And so he was able to go, um, into the bathroom, like change, do all that stuff and like get rid of it. And then mm. we, we kind of tracked him and monitored where he put it. And then we, and he tried to hide it. He tried to hide it. And then we found it. Right. And then Courtney was able to go get it and then put it in the laundry and then wash it and everything. And then I distracted them while they were still playing. And so oh, I was like, you guys are lifesavers. And then, he, so she washed it, dried it, was able to put it back. He, Still had to smell a little funky, but you know, like he at least like wasn't like to the point where all his friends were gonna be like, "Dude, bro, right. you saved his life." Yeah, that's what I said. I told him, I said, "Completely you undercover." Idea, be, that kid's gonna be indebted to you, and you oh, get forever. Yeah, well, yeah. because if it happens in front of your friends at that age, dude, right? Like, I knew how embarrassing. I knew a kid in uh, in fourth grade who shit himself, and uh, he's always that kid now. Yeah, forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he's yeah. always a kid. High school, college. He was always so the the memories exactly. that I do have of it because I don't have a lot of memories. So that's do they know, do they know why is it because you're just connected to your feelings or something or so I mean look at read the read the definition. It says it says that yeah, there's heard, neurologically immature development, musculature, yeah. and stuff like that. So you it's it's you it's the weirdest thing, and it, you know it's funny that you hearing this hearing you tell the story. God, I haven't thought about this stuff in like forever, right? Yeah. Um, the few memories that I do have of it. Every single time I was playing video games. 
Mm. And it was all, I was always like, like doing, doing something in. like that. It might I, be that you're disconnected and, and I, for your body. And, and I, and I'm, and I know I'm intentionally holding it. Like I, re, I can recall oh. like needing mm. to go, but like, Oh, I'm not. And like trying to fight it, trying mm. to fight it, trying to fight it. And you just kept prolonging, prolonging until it happens. And then you're like, fuck. And then you, then as a kid that age where you're aware of like, this is not good. My friend's going to find out you try and hide it or disguise it or figure out that. And Oh yeah. That yeah. went on for like, I want to say a good year to two years after, maybe not two, probably probably felt like two years to me as a kid it was probably a year yeah. after right after my dad's death before it got solved. But for the longest time, my parents didn't, they, I didn't, they didn't know this until I think they finally got to God. a point where they're like, this is weird. Cause he didn't do any of this stuff before. Now hmm. all of a sudden he's doing this. Mm -hmm. And then the, I think the dot, this is where we got diagnosed with this and then got told. Wow. Yeah. And then did you have to huh. see somebody? I mean, we were, I remember I was in therapy as a kid for, yeah. yeah. So after my dad's death, like we went, we were in family therapy and then one-on-one -on -one therapy. So I've been in and out of that stuff my whole life. And I don't ever remember like having a breakthrough or salt. Like it just never was a problem. Again. Yeah. It became, became a certain point in my life where it was no longer an issue and it, but it was a period of time that I know that it happened right after my dad's. That was the only reason why it it makes I like I knew there was something off or yeah, different of course. because it was like never before, of and course. then all of a sudden that starts happening at that age. And you're older; it shouldn't be happening at that at that point anymore. I was obviously well potty trained wow. before that, and then the memories that I have of it is only like. I can remember playing video games and I can remember being at friends' houses and things like that hmm. where I was holding it and then being like super embarrassed of like trying to fucking get rid of the underwear and, and yeah, hide yeah. it and do all sorts yeah, of yeah, oh, yeah. Toledo. Totally, right? Yeah, I was still, last time I did, I was 13 or 14. I was even older, but it wasn't for any other reason than, than I could. I told you guys a story. I <laughs> I yeah, I had my, a really bad. My bathing God. suit knot was too tight. Yeah. I couldn't get it I off inside. I something <laughs> and it, it was one of those like <laughs> fart to shark kind of moments or yeah. I, oh no, anyway. dude. I, I I had a full on. Yeah, it was not good. And then I was stuck in the bathroom uh, while everybody's swimming and I had just had my short, my bathing suit shorts on. And I was like, what do I do now? Oh my God. Oh yeah, dude. Let me tell you. I made it. I figured it out. Yeah. yeah I figured it out. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how, I don't know how I got away or maybe I didn't. Maybe so, I had like okay, my when you have a, like you guys. When yeah. you got a big house party like that with these kids, do you, do you just let them go all night or do you have a bedtime? Oh, like no, what happens? No, no. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Yeah, but so it, it was like constant kind of monitoring they won't go I, I mean i i, I kind of came in with i let them go up to a certain point i think it was like 11 30 and i started to kind of crack you know crack down on on the noise it, so really i was like okay i put a movie on and then had them all in the living room and so we actually put a, like a mattress there and everything too and so it was like here's you know everybody's here you can, you don't have to sleep but you got to be quiet you know, and so that's really just the rules. And so a couple times they would like giggle and like start laughing. And then the one kid would scream again, like, ah, <laughs> come out there. The scream, yeah. kid. <laughs> the scream kid, dude. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I had to uh, uh, regulate a few times, but it was like, it wasn't too bad. Like they were, they were all right. They were just really excited. And so we, we tried, like I got terrible sleep you know, that of course. night, but like the next morning we went and we went to uh, uh, the ropes course and it was. Do you make them all breakfast the next day? Or how does that work? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just scramble up some eggs. Well, Courtney had it's like a, some sourdough waffles, and so oh, I like, yeah. did all that. And she she goes, she's a real good cook these days. I'll be honest. Yeah, that's she, a, she does the that's whole a good thing time. for them. Yeah. So he's how old did he turn? So he's gonna be eleven. So oh, yeah. yeah. So this is right before, because in a couple years, if you do a sleepover, you, you can't fall asleep first, at least. Yeah. They don't do that yet at this age. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Like that e happens Ethan's later. Ethan's crew, they all stay up all night long. Yeah, well, they, you don't want to fall asleep. Does Ethan hang out with him when he has his friends like that, or does he take off and go somewhere and do something else? What did, well, you, what did Ethan do? Yeah, so he actually, it was interesting because he was kind of like complaining about it. Like, Nobody come in my room and, and like <laughs> lock in his door. You know? It's like, hey, relax, guy. You know, like, like no one gives a shit, bro. Uh, we'll, we'll see how long this lasts. Yeah, nobody cared. You know, like, okay, see you, dude. Uh, but then he finally came in when he found out what kind of video games they're playing, you know, and like now he's somebody put like Fortnite on. He's like, oh, oh, dude, you want to do this? And, da, da, da. and he's saying all the terms that the tweens <laughs> say You'd like the cool yeah guy like the cool he's trying to be like oh this cool thing and i know this cool thing and i'm just like yeah you know it was cringe yeah but, i had i had a buddy he started hanging out with him a i had bit. a buddy who had an older sister and she was only a few years older so she would have sleepovers and he would love that let me tell you <laughs> he would love when his sister would have sleepovers oh my sister had a sleepover last night I was, you know, I was peeking through the door trying to see oh, what they God. were doing <laughs> you know, my sister would have sleepovers we used right. to torture all her friends that was a thing that we used to really? do yeah yeah we used to, my sister would tell you all kinds of stuff. oh my, my three year old now there's a big age gap between him and his sister because my daughter's 14 
but she has she if she has her especially one friend she has one friend he is like smitten he yeah. is oh yeah he adores dude. her he, he and he's weird about it too. he's he's only three but he makes this like kind of like embarrassed face and he like puts his hands in his pockets <laughs> and tries to act cool he's three years old you know three what I mean? years old yeah, yeah. so cool. he tries to act cool and he's always like hey look and he'll like do some weird thing to show off you know oh i can do this just, yeah, 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 just yeah. like his dad dude that's crazy yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm gonna like teach you something. all of us we're all like that dude <laughs> yeah yeah that's funny it's that's funny because dude even that's how i scored your mom yeah <laughs> You know, these, look at this. You know, these kids actually impressed me though. They were like really physically driven. I saw you. I saw. I was thinking about. Uh, it. I was like, of course, at Justin's house, he yeah. gets all these kids. Takes they're taking all their shirt offs and they're taking turns. That was even my idea. Plowing into each other, yeah. taking. They were all tackling each other. Oh, were they? Oh, yeah, yeah. You didn't see that video? Well, yeah, they were all. They would. They would. They had. The, you know, the giant. We all have those giant bean bags, right? The love yeah, socks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And then one kid would would stand there, and then the other kids would line up and take turns. Bam! Fucking tackling them into the thing. And they're all their like shoulders. shoulders and like full on blasting each other. Like, I'm like, oh it, God, one of these it, kids could get hurt and Justin's going to be fucking liable. <laughs> I was actually like, I started getting worried. I had to shut it down because it was getting really like, they're, they're turning Yeah, one of the, kid, one, one hey, one of the like, kids ah. dropped his shoulder yeah. and like threw a nice, yeah. like, Just I was like, like ooh, <laughs> that stung. Yeah. And, and I think what spawned, because like one of the kids, his older brother, like I used coached him at the high school. Uh, and so he knew that I was like a football coach. And so he's like, hey, uh, Justin, watch this. And you just like, just destroyed this kid. And I was like, whoa, that's good technique. Do you guys remember? I, I was just thinking about, I was, who was I talking? I was talking to someone the other day. I think it was you, Doug. And I was talking about how when I was a kid and I did judo, you know, you throw each other in judo. So I'm 13 years old. We used to get thrown all the time. It's part of the training. Yeah. I went back as an adult in my late 20s, early 30s, I think. And uh, I, I was like, I don't, this hurts. I, you, I, now you throw me and I let you and I fall properly. It just hurts now. Yeah. Remember that? Like them tackling each other. Yeah. How would that feel to us if now. we're like, hey, bro, hit me how hard you can in this beanbag? I know. We'd, oh, we'd be messed up afterwards. <laughs> yeah. It gave me a little hope, though. I'm like, I don't know. You know, not all these kids are just like little weenies. <laughs> <you know? laughs> good stuff. Some of them still have That's <laughs> good stuff. Hey, speaking of little weenies or whatever, I keep reading these articles. You know, Sam Elton. You know, <laughs> no. Wow. <laughs> Terrible well, transition my, right I, there. I didn't mean it like speaking, that. Speaking about <laughs> Little weenies. Let me, tell you, let me tell you what I read on the weekends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you awkward. Check out this website. Yeah. I uh, oh. no no no. Uh, I was reading about Sam Altman. You know he's one of the founders of uh, the Chat GPT, right? OpenAI or whatever. OpenAI. Yeah. And um, he's he's coming out and saying somebody interviewed him and said, you know, what are the what are your biggest challenges? Where he goes, I lose sleep over the fact that we released that. He wow. regrets releasing uh, AI out into the world. Really? Wow. He does already. Yeah. That's yes. a little scary Already, because yeah. it's a little scary. He, his biggest fears are that there's going to be people with bad intentions who yes. are going to create evil algorithms. Of course. And how these, these, like, he's like, we won't be able to control it. It's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's so it's funny. Scary. You're like, duh. I mean, I how what, you're, you're, you're developing that. And that never cross you as brilliant as all these people are that like never cross your mind that some nefarious person at one point will get you know, a hold of this. That's what drives us. Who's what's the guy's the name? Fuck? Who's the guy's name? The symbol symbolism expert. Uh, what was his name? Oh, John, John, John Pejo. Pejo. Yeah. He talks about this as a driver. It, it's like a, um, like we can't stop it. It's this, this driver that we have. It's like the development of the nuclear weapon of nuclear yeah. bomb. We know it's bad that we're making this. We know this technology is terrible. We know that once we create this, yeah. it's like there's no turning back. But we're just like geared to do it anyway. <laughs> we're geared to do it because we don't want the other guy to do it first. Uh -huh. So that's 100% what's driving AI. Every single person making it right now and working with it is like, this is dangerous. Yeah, we have yeah. to figure it out before the other guy figures it out. That's it. And it just keeps driving us to, to our potential destruction. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, so... Wild, yeah. It's, you know, it's you know, like technology, future, stuff like that. One of the the ongoing uh, debates that we've had on this podcast is the whole streaming service stuff. Yeah. So I don't know, Justin. I know you were busy, so I don't know if you watched football this weekend or not. But one of the interesting things that they did was uh, so this year, um, Amazon Prime bought the rights to Thursday night football. So if you watch football, so football plays Monday night footballers game. Thursday That's night right, there's one game, and then Sunday is traditionally football. Okay. okay? And Thursday night was purchased by Amazon. So now, if you if you want to watch Thursday night football, you also have to have Am Prime. Amazon Prime. Oh wow! So it forces you to have that. Well, this this weekend, um, and I didn't even know this was coming. We're all sitting there watching the game, and then the second game comes on, 
and none of the normal broadcasting channels have it on and you have to have Peacock in order to watch this one game. So you have these big streaming services now that are starting to purchase the yeah, ESPN own ESPN owns Sunday night. So you have ESPN app you have to have for that. You have to have the prime. Doesn't this feel like it's uh, just it's just lack of a better term, it's prime for disruption. So okay. it seems like such a mess. That's why this yes. and that, the reason why I'm bringing it up All is I, I'm, the place. I'm still going back to my original argument that it's going to frustrate the consumer. So remember you guys yeah. are like oh it's going to be very a la carte and everybody have all this thing. It's gotten to the point now where if I have like just a sport like football that I'm into, um, you don't need to be into a bunch of all the other stuff out there, but just that one sport is getting disrupted by so many streaming services that I need to have seven of them just to get the games that I yeah. want. Yeah. And so I'm having to, and then it's like, when I look at the price, I'm like, wait a second, I'm paying more than what I was paying for the stupid satellite and the cable stuff. So yeah. that's like the ESPN app that I had to do just for pay-per-view anymore for any fight or anything to watch. Yeah. Yes. Like, ah. So I just feel, you know, exactly. I think it's getting primed for disruption that somebody is going to come in, one of the big players, Amazon, Apple, one of them, I think, and they're going to just buy buy up them what it what what the what the markets seem to follow is that there's this like something happens so like this like oh media you know tv radio whatever then it becomes uh dis it becomes scattered in the sense that um it's not uh one source what's the word i'm looking for when it's not diversified maybe diversified but there's another word for it and then it starts to consolidate again and then it then it becomes truly uh, diversified or spread out. So like if you look at the internet, if you look at phone services, if you look at, um, you know, it's like, oh, we only have two services. So there's like three companies that know all the food in the world. But then it, what happens over time is it then becomes even more scattered. Um, so yeah, it's probably going to happen like you're saying. Yeah. There's probably going to be two or three major providers yeah and then it's going to get scattered Doesn't it make you miss like uh having scheduled television <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Like, I, sometimes I, I i reflect back on that i'm like oh friday nights and then you kind of like look forward to it it's consistency like forces everybody to sit we down just together have too many damn choices all the time and just like too much that we're having to drive you know it's like somebody needs to like take the steering wheel and give us something that's consistent mm -hmm. and like I can count on this yep. and oh, decentralized. Man, be, that's what I was looking for. Yeah. yeah decentralized. decentralized. Yeah. yeah. It right. goes from decentralized to centralized. Then it becomes very decentralized. Well, I yeah. saw it cause even Disney, I think they're, they're moving into merging with Hulu. Right. And that's their whole thing is like trying to, because they're just losing uh, like people like being subscribed to their Disney plus. Mm -hmm. But yeah, th th that's an interesting company cause it's just like, after all the acquisitions, they basically bought like every amazing franchise you could possibly hope for. And I think, you know, obviously that bit them in the ass because that, that was so much money that they vested into that. So yeah. I, where, you know, you want, you have to wonder the place. What's the Doug, what's the fail rate on acquisitions is like really yeah, high. It's like 78. Yeah. It's yeah. Huge. So like, you know, and if your culture just never align, like you'd hope. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, so I always wonder like, what's the strategy on like, like someone like Disney to acquire, like you're saying Hulu, ESPN, which they own those. If, if acquisitions fail 80% of the time, I mean, you're pretty much guaranteeing that at least one of those is going to fail. It's not going to work. Why would you do it? Mm -hmm. But you know, maybe at that point you can, it's not just about, uh, you know, it being successful or not, it's literally just acquiring the 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 attention. It doesn't matter. Yep. It doesn't matter. It's a, it's, it's going to lose initially. Yep. The long play is that we just we garner more attention. What is it? Se between seventy and ninety percent of all acquisitions fail. Yeah. Mergers and that's huge. Yeah, mergers and acquisitions. That's crazy. Yeah, it is. That's so crazy. Yeah, I mean, but so, the ones that succeed, odds. I wonder what the odds are, like how well they do. You know what I mean? So like the thirty, the the ten to thirty percent that do succeed, it's probably massive. Upcoming. Yeah, and I and I want again back to my point is I wonder like how I'm they trying to think what, what's a good acquisition. I know, I'm trying to merger. think of an example. Oh, twenty four fitness was with what? It was twenty four Nautilus and Ray Wilson's Family Fitness. Uh, I don't know if that would constitute that because they were both small. Yeah, they weren't. Twenty four Nautilus had seventy two locations. Uh, Ray Wilson's Family Fitness had. 60 or something like that okay yeah. so then yeah, it was and big then, okay. and then they well, and then they okay yep. so that you could count that yeah um there's not i mean there's not a lot i mean what didn't um uh amazon bought whole foods recently right in the last couple of years right that yeah. seemed to have worked out didn't uh was it facebook bought instagram at one point that worked out and yeah, youtube out. was uh was that google google, google, google. bought that so yeah those yeah, worked some, yeah Okay. Yeah, because what's what's thrown in this number too is a lot of companies we've never heard of. Well, and I also mm -hmm. wonder too if that like what's thrown in this number is like is again like comparing those independently. Like, oh, Marvel was doing this good by itself, now it gets acquired, and it's yeah. not doing that good, therefore it's a fail. But yet, 
Disney still acquired, uh, you know, yeah. 50,000 50, more viewers than yeah, they it did They almost hedged before. their bet on top of, I don't know. Yeah, because of all the already successful franchises they yeah. acquired. Dude, speaking of movies, I watched half. We haven't finished it. Jessica wanted to watch the Barbie movie. Have you guys seen that yet? Of course, bro, no. it was so no. I tried to. We tried to watch it. It's okay. fucking horrible. Okay, so I watched. <laughs> and how does it get, I, I haven't how did, even tried? How, so. Yeah, Katrina and I put it on this weekend. People and loved it. People got, yeah, loved got it. Eighty it got eighty and eighty something. On the, so I haven't finished awful, it yet. Bro, I'm gonna finish awful. it because yeah, it's entertaining. I can see why people like it. I didn't. I was not a big fan, but there was a. So I'm only halfway through because we had to stop. The kids woke up uh, from their nap, so we'll finish it tonight. But the part that cracked me up is you know like, I don't know if I'm gonna do a spoiler alert here. It's been out for a while, so whatever. Uh, there's Barbie land and in Barbie land, it's like all, all the Barbies run the world and everything's about this. And you know, women do everything, whatever. And all the Ken's are just basically like waiting for Barbie to come you know, get their attention with them. Yeah. And, they, right? Yeah. That's a like, big deal for Ken to get Barbie just, to, look just at to get them. noticed. Right. Yeah. Then they go do to they the real, still not have any anatomy. No, the, uh, they talk about that in there. Oh, they have okay. a blob right. of, uh, of, yeah, no, of flash. Like then he goes, so then they go to the real world. Okay. And this is the part that cracked me up. They're in the real world. And Ken breaks off for a second and he sees like he walks by a gym and there's dudes that are like fist pumping and like hitting the bag. <laughs> yeah. Then he goes to like a library and uh, he looks at, and he lo looks at the money and it's got like all these men as the you know faces on there and all the presidents. And he's like, oh, I like this place. <laughs> I, was, I was laughing so hard. <laughs> that, part, that part made me laugh. Yeah, I was like, this place is cool. Like dudes are cool here. <laughs> dudes are cool, yeah. man. <laughs> but then he tries to apply for jobs. He tries to be a doctor, and the doctor's like, you have no education, you have no PhD or whatever. He goes, yeah, but I'm a man. Yeah, but right? Shouldn't I get the job? I'm a uh, man. They're like, we're uh, good, right? It doesn't work that way. He's like, you're doing a terrible job for the patriarchy. Yeah. And the guy looks at him, he like looks around, he's like, we just do it better. We hide it now. He's like, but sorry, you, I can't hire you. <laughs> <laughs> that was the funny part. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we couldn't great. even finish it. Katrina was like, ah, she, she didn't like it. Yeah, I yeah, know. She was like, not having it. I mean, I definitely wasn't into it either. But it, I think we got, we didn't even get that far. I don't think we got that far at all. So we probably got a third, maybe at the mm. most, into it. it was like, uh, no, oh, not fun. I watched the Napoleon one. That was good. Oh, yeah. What's that? that? Oh, oh sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see What's that. What's his one? name? Yeah. Walking, Walking Phoenix. Phoenix. Good. Yeah. yeah, it was good. Now, how did it depict Napoleon? So I, because well, there's a lot of myths about Yeah, him. but out of us, I'm like, I'm the worst historian. So, like, I don't, yeah. So, for me, but what I mean is, did it make him look like he was mad? or good oh no like they I conqueror mean, i mean all the above okay like i yeah. think that joaquin phoenix probably did as uh, i did an, uh, if that was the character he's trying to depict like he definitely played this and again i don't know a lot of you know he wasn't as short as they said he was did you guys know that Oh, you know really? how everyone makes him like he's that super was a small. Slight, yeah, that was a uh, propaganda. Okay, of course. Well, and they don't really play into that ever. They don't ever make anything okay. about his height, so they don't say anything about that. But you can tell he's a little bit uh, almost on the spectrum. Okay, that he plays that kind of a, a role at that. Like there's a bit of brilliance about him in certain things, but then there's another part of him where he's you know uh, he's a little off, you know. Yeah. And so he does he does play Joaquin that. Phoenix plays a good villain. Yeah, I mean, he's just, he's a, just great a great actor. Yeah, he's, he's a great actor. Did he says, like, really good. Like, he, you don't know what's going what on. What it really did make me want to do, though, is actually go read more of the history so so I have a, a, a better understanding of everything that was depicted. He was a in the, brilliant war general. Well, that and they did a good job. That right? they, they highlighted the amount of wars uh, uh, that he, he had. Right? The, his uh, strategies were, I mean, they, they, you, you learn them today. If you, if you go to military school, they'll yeah. talk yeah. about yeah, his yeah. strategies. And that and that was depicted, right? And that, I know that much about him, right? Yeah. He was, that he was known for that. And they obviously did that in there. Um, he did, did they show his, he, he was like infatuated with Josephine. In love with this woman, really. yeah. So she found all her his letters to her, and it was like, I can't sleep without you. I can't, you know, like, yeah. So crazy. that it's interesting about the relationship, and I don't know if it's true or not, but it she she cheats on him, and he still stays with her, yeah, because he's so infatuated yeah. with her, yeah. And, and even later on, again, not the spoiler. I mean, she, this is it's all history, history right? Yeah. So yeah. she she can't bear a child. <laughs> So you know, after years and years and years of them trying, so he eventually mm -hmm. goes and gets like a really young girl pregnant just so he has a, a, has an heir, but then still writes letters to her. Mm. So they they divorce just so he can go have a kid to, to carry on uh, his name. And he continues to write Josephine because of his, his wow. love for her still. I want to so. watch that. Yeah. It was good. I want to see it. Yeah. yeah I the, I, the thing about him being short, I remember learning that that was propaganda from the other, the, the, his opponents. It's to stuck, try to make man. him, yeah, because he was like average height. He was yeah. like the same height as everybody else. 
But in, but wow. they put that out there, and I thought that was true too. I thought you know yeah. Napoleon complex. You hear that term, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does that mean, little dude? Oh, he that, was always the example. Yeah, yeah. Of the short man complex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. What's his name? Lord Farquaad from uh, uh, yeah. Shrek. They, they copied <laughs> yeah. you know uh, uh, Napoleon. Oh, is that was what that's inspired to be? by? Oh. Alexander the Great. Like, uh, his... well, he's he is because yeah. he, he he in the show it even talks about like um, Alexander the Great and who was the other Genghis Khan. Not Genghis Khan, someone else. I can't. I don't know why. Well, I'm slipping me right now. Who's, uh, you know, he basically Hannibal. Was, Hannibal yeah. No Hannibal. No, no. Oh. I don't. I mean, anyways, he, he's talking about that. He's following those great leaders, and so like his that's his like a you ever big read motivation about, is for him to be on that the, on that level. Right. You ever read about yeah. Hannibal and how he's the elephants against the Romans? Could you imagine? Yeah. Fight back then. Uh, fighting terrifying t- like uh, elephants so terrifying. you gotta fight elephants <laughs> yeah. could you imagine that <laughs> you know it's just you've never seen like these animals yeah just, it, it, it's a thunderous you know like as they walk like the whole ground shakes It'd oh yeah. yeah they used to use war dogs the romans too yeah they'd use these particular types of uh mastiffs and they would they would attach i mean i, I read this a long time ago i don't know if it's true but they would attach these like spikes to their collars and light the ends on fire and they'd run them through wow to scatter i think the thing that's most horses yeah that's most fascinating to me when you look at like war back then is just the approach of this like you like you literally just march straight to your death yeah you know like like war today is strategic and it's far away far away and sniping and like you no, know covert face face back then. yeah i mean yeah. back then it's like we're going to war and it's yeah. like i see doug you know yeah, 100 yeah, yards yeah, away yeah. and he sees me and we're just walking straight towards each other <laughs> with like the no Scots trees to hide like, behind i mean yeah, that yeah. imagine the fucking balls oh, yeah, my, you yeah. have to have just to be on that line just to say i'm i'm gonna go do that i mean yeah. and then imagine the type of leader it's a whole nother kind of you human. would have to be to inspire men to go do that yeah. i mean they you're literally inspiring them like yeah you're probably gonna die the best today. ones were in there with them yeah yeah know? that, like, well, that was charge. something that napoleon they highlighted yeah. a lot in him was he's he like was in the war he's like one of the only the generals battles. that like when the That's battle why, going dude, they he, buy in he, he he he's like antsy and then all of a sudden he rushes in because yeah. he wants in on the on the fighting which yeah. was i thought that was pretty cool it, it, i know it's going we're going all history here but yeah. if you ever you want to read about like inspiring soldiers joan of arc is a really crazy this girl who's like god told me she, whatever yeah, she's a crazy and the story. men followed her to their death like we are gonna follow this girl yeah crazy yeah that yeah, part that i was... think that part i think i'm the most interested in is i mean i've always i've always been into like leadership and reading and stuff in that direction and so when i hear of these great leaders or these people that you know rally men like you know for me to uh, rally a bunch of young men to you know make a sales goal for a month like <laughs> I was so proud of myself right like yeah you know what I'm saying like they, we got us all in one direction and we hit goal and we're like, like I'm badass I'm a great leader and I think You're like slaying those sales bro I mean it's yeah. another level when you are convincing hundreds or thousands of men to basically die for you to go I mean that to me is like that's kind of crazy bro when he's on your back I know it's wild dude Dude, oh, well, in the same vein of like information and military and all that, like, dude, I had some fun fact for you, Sal. Uh, uh, so night vision goggles, like, I, I don't know how true this is, so don't like, you know, hold this, hold me accountable. But um, <laughs> I read this, so say shit. you know, there, there anything's on the internet. Um, but <laughs> I read this and I was like tripping on it. Uh, they said that they they tried multiple versions of like night vision goggles with different lenses, and so what we see now is like you know the green yeah. kind of, uh, and also too they have like a bluish kind of like a, a phosphorus kind of like look, so you could see like in in the dark. Uh, but they use this kind of red lens before that, uh, and I forget the name of it, um, but it was like some kind of chemical that was added to this like red dye. Um, and so according to Is this, where they saw demons. Yes. Yeah. They saw read this. Like, like, so they actually like start shooting at random objects and they're like, why are you shooting it? You don't see this. And like the, uh, the soldiers were freaking out yeah, because they, they saw, demons. saw demons. And so they actually, actually think that, that, uh, they're able to see like quantum particles. And so it was what? like, it was yeah. like, yeah, it was yeah, like, so they had to it, change it. Coordinating into like these these shadow objects, and they were like shooting at these at nothing. Yep. And so they they or removed them something, or it was something (laughs) in a different dimension. (laughs) But I was like, what? I did not. uh, So I don't know if that's real or not. Hey, I I have a question about one of our partners, Sal. I wanted to ask you because we have a couple partners now that have moved into the peptide space, and in particular with like 
face face creams and stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah. Um, when you look at like a product like Caldera, which I know is an all natural product, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, is it something that I can use the peptides with it also yeah. or I should do them? Oh, no, like, totally. It can. They don't. 100%, nope. hundred percent. And, and am I, am that's I, what you should do. Really? Yep. It's not, I'm not overdoing it or over no. or is it, is it, a, it's not a waste? No, for me so to do peptides, both of them? no, peptides are signalers, right? So oh, what's that one called? Is it GHK? Yeah, GHK dash CU. Is that the one? Yeah, okay. GHK dash CU. So that, uh, you know, you apply that to your skin, it improve. It, it, it's a signaler. So it tells the skin to regenerate faster. It tells the cells of the skin to, to essentially, you know, turn over quicker. So you have you, you Okay, so skin. one is basically signaling the cells to basically to do rejuvenate, right? right? Be younger, whatever that. And then the other one's actually addressing right in the the my your microbiome moisture. on your skin, uh, the, the your natural skin oils, like what protects your skin to allow your skin to do what it what it's supposed to be doing. Bro, my, so combining the p combining both would be like fire. That's exactly what you would want to do. So my face budget is starting to rival my wife's. So I would have never thought <laughs> that, that was going to happen. <laughs> well, you're doing a lot of it on your side. Well, yeah, so that's the reason why I'm asking this uh so the audience knows is that so you know when we have Dr. Khan coming in this week so it'll be great for us to talk more to him but the part, he gave me uh, the GHKCU cream that I'm supposed yeah. to rub on my psoriasis. Well, he also gave Katrina that for her face. So I'm assuming that it's obviously yeah. good for both, right? Uh -huh. it's good. Mine was mainly for healing my psoriasis. Uh, Did you know that GHKCU, too, if you put it on your beard or your head, let's say, your scalp, it'll also help uh, improve the pigment of your hair. So if you have like white, beard or whatever it'll make it a little oh darker. wow do you remember i'm gonna i'm gonna try that actually okay, so you know how you kept me. telling me my hair looked darker that's what it was oh yeah that's exactly what it was hmm. yeah oh wow so yeah, both caldera and that together is like yeah primo but caldera is like there's no pep there's no signaling molecules in there it just literally balances out your skin's natural microbiome and oil um, and I mean, look, you notice right away if you use it, you know, right away it feels oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah. 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 The first time you apply it, you notice, I just didn't know if I was overdoing it or what that, but you're saying yeah. that there's synergistic. So that's, totally. oh, totally. that's cool. Totally. Oh, I wanted to bring up a, a, a study on diet, um, just to highlight the power that diet has on your health, just in your mental health, I should say. Now we know this, we know this. Okay. When you change your diet, and you change your, you know, you start exercising, the, the data shows like improvements in mental health across the board, okay? Well, this study used a specific diet for specific types of mental health issues. So they took 31 adults with severe persistent mental illness, major depressive disorder. So we're not talking about like people who just kind of feel crappy, crappy. major depressive disorder, bipolar disorder, disorder, and schizophrenia. So these are three major mental illnesses. They put them on a ketogenic diet, okay? So very specific type of diet. High fat, moderate protein, zero carbohydrates. All of them noticed a, a, a dramatic improvement in symptoms. 40% 40, 40 of them, it seemed to cure their issues. Hmm. So now why am I bringing this up? Well, for two reasons. One, um, brain inflammation. Your diet plays a big role in how you feel. Period, end of story. Mental health, period, end of story. So does exercise, but diet plays a big role. So that's number one. Number two, this theory, if you look at mitochondrial dysfunction theory, there's a lot of people in the, in the cutting edge, I don't know, biohacking space that would say it's like the root of all illness, root of mental illness, cancer. This is true. Cancers all seem to have this in common. There seems to be some kind of mitochondrial dysfunction in the cell. Um, the Warburg effect, uh, and I think I'm saying it right, that was the first time we identified that many cancer cells, if you starve them from of carbohydrates, they they can't do what they do because their mitochondria is so dysfunctional, it can't even turn uh, sugar into energy. It can only, it, it just, it, it's, excuse me, it can only turn sugar into energy. It can't use ketones. So you 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 take all the sugar or carbohydrates away, these cancer cells die. That mm -hmm. was the Warburg effect. So the mitochondrial dysfunction is at the root of uh, what seems to be most, if not all, cancers. And this study and others are pointing to the fact that this may be the root of many of our chronic issues, where our mitochondria just isn't operating uh, the way it's supposed to, which leads to anxiety, depression, 
um, you know, inflammation, all this, all these, you know, different kinds of things. Yep. Now the question is, okay, okay, how do we improve mitochondrial health? There's not a, sil a silver bullet. I think uh, what we're what we're seeing really is uh, not the root, but still more of the smoke. I think mitochondrial dysfunction is a result of poor lifestyle, being unhealthy, not moving, not exercising, mm -hmm. not eating right. By the way, the form of exercise that's best that seems to have the, the most profound effects on mitochondria. You guys want to guess? Uh, strength training. Strength training. Yeah. Now, how does like strength training, diet, and then let's throw like a biohacking tool like red red light therapy line up with all those things? Oh, I mean, like, that's great. That's, that's, that's amazing. I know, I know they're all good, right? I know that, obviously. How would they work together? No. How do they line up as far as which one's moving the needle the most? Oh, geez. That's so hard to say. You, you know why? Because <clears throat> it depends how bad your activity was or how bad your diet was. But yeah. if we look at like the... If you looked at the typical American, let's just say that as the context, they'd probably get, it'd probably be best to approach exercise first only because it's easier to approach that than it is to diet. As you guys well know, when yeah. we work with clients, mm -hmm. diet is like, that's a whole other monster. So probably, hey, you guys lift weights twice a week. Let's start there. And then we'll slowly work on diet. And red light therapy is a distant yeah. third. That's, I mean, sure. it's going to do something, but it's not going to come close. So, I mean, that's that's a good way to put it. I feel like that's where like someone like us would go, right? Because it's like we've already checked the box nutritionally, yes. checked the box exercise-wise. So it's like, okay, now this is the next thing to, to do that. So that's good, though. That's, that's what I was looking for. So the average person who's like lost, like it's like I would never tell a client who's never trained, not dieting, yeah. or doing like that, oh, go buy a red light therapy. That's a good way for you to start. It's like, no. Go go strength train first. That's the easy easiest yeah. to, to implement, right? Just that doing that once or twice a week is going to show profound results. Next, let's start to really start to tighten up the diet, make better 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 food choices. Then, once we've strung those two things together consistently for some period of time, like now you can look into things yeah. like that. But that's even an ideal world, right? Because what if the red light therapy gave the person enough, like they felt good enough for from it to then want to get off the couch and exercise. Then it may be a front line because, you know, having someone sit down in front of a red light might be all they will, are willing to do right now. You know what I mean? Like, okay, fine. Here, sit in front of this red light. Let's see if it makes so you passive. feel. Yeah. Let's see if it gives you enough Probably energy to get up and do, do something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, that's a, that's a, that's a great, that's a great point. I mean, because I think of family members that I have yeah. that I've been trying to talk into exercising yeah, yeah. and it hasn't worked. And I've already done this where I've bought them a red light. Put this in front of your face. Because <laughs> will you do that at least? You know? yeah, yeah. Even then, sometimes they're like, no, I, don't know, I forgot. Like, oh, my God. What a, but, uh, God, how hard is yeah, it? The, it's so hard. What's the like, easiest That's the stuff, though, that makes me so I – mean, I know originally the, you opened up with us talking about the strength training, right, and the changing in the in the, the culture. Like Sometimes like, you're like, I don't know, dude. Like It seems like so so far away for some I watched people, this cartoon. You know? Maybe it was the Jetsons. You guys remember the Jetsons? Of oh, course. Yeah. It was an old ass cartoon depicting Me, the George future. Jetson. And uh, he would get into an exercise machine and the machine would move him. Oh, yeah, so he'd just sit there and, it, <laughs> I, you know, if somebody invents that one day where you could literally go somewhere else in your head, here, play video games, we'll take your body over yeah. and make an exercise for yeah. you. But uh, that still wouldn't give you the same reminds benefit, me of right? the, the band that just shakes people. You know, remember that? Did I ever tell you my grandma had that? Uh, Did I tell you guys that my grandma had that a long really? time ago? Yeah. It was a white. Like it was like a white Remember machine. A, a you plug it in with with goggles yeah. and like a oh, bowling ball. Oh, we got shot in the belly with it. it looks like That's a giant, it. like old school, like uh, kitchen yeah. appliance. She had one, yeah. and it had it a big leather, yeah. looked like a weight belt or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It just and shakes you. You just put it around and you turn it on. And blah, 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 it just shakes the <laughs> shit out of your belly. <laughs> <laughs> like you're just, you're just gonna shiver it off. You know? <laughs> Good stuff. Like, hey, whatever works. All right, so uh, shout out. So my episode, my, I got interviewed on. Um, Mari Llewellyn's podcast, which is, what is it? The wellness. Maybe Doug, you can find the name of her podcast for me. Um, but check it out. Great episode. They've got a great podcast, great team over there. Um, so definitely check her out. She's one of the young, young woman, one of the good people in the space up and coming. What is it? Pursuit of wellness. Yeah. Check that out. Look, probiotics are now proven beyond a shadow of doubt to improve your gut health, skin. Some of them have been shown to help with mental health. Great stuff. The problem is most probiotics suck. Well, there's a company called Seed. This is literally the world's best probiotic. Nothing comes close. That's the only one we work with. Go check them out. Get yourself a discount. Go to seed.com forward slash mind pump and get yourself a discount. If you use the code 25 mind pump, that'll give you 25% off by the way. All right, back to the show. First question is from Kirsten L. Thomas. 
what is the difference between a trap bar for deadlifts and a straight bar? I was listening to Rogan and he said they are safer. Should I be using a trap bar? All right. So first, let's be very, very clear, okay? Any exercise performed properly with the proper amount or right amount of stability, strength, and mobility. So any exercise in that context is safe, okay? Mm -hmm. Period, end of story. Now, the difference between a straight bar and a trap bar deadlift, and we'll talk about muscle activation because there is a little bit of a difference. But the difference is a straight bar requires a higher level of skill yep. to perform in the context that I just described. Okay, so if you have no skill in either exercise, which one is more likely to hurt you? The straight bar, because it's a more difficult exercise to perform with the right amount, like I said, strength, stability, mobility, et cetera. So that's, that's about it. So trap bar is easy to learn. It's easier to do properly than a straight bar, but they're both extremely valuable and I don't think you should avoid um, either one. I mean, there's always, you know, situations I, where one may be better than the other, but they're both great. I think simpler put is this, uh, and all of us did this, uh, a lot of my clients that were beginner clients, advanced age that just hired me, I used the trap bar a lot, yeah. mm -hmm. a lot. It was a great tool uh, to get a lot of, not all of, but a lot of the benefits that I could get from deadlifting. Right. Uh, so it was a great play, but even with those clients, the ultimate goal was to get them to be able to do a barbell deadlift. I wanted them to be able to do that. I didn't want to just settle like, oh, we can't do a barbell deadlift. So let's just do trap bar deadlift forever because they're great and it's safer. It's not that simple. It's like you're, there are better and more benefits from a traditional deadlift, but it also matters where my client is and meeting them where they're at. And so if you've never done either one, trap bar deadlift is a great place to start, but with the intent of I want to learn how to do a barbell deadlift because of the value that comes so from that. So you can, yeah, really address your posterior chain. I mean, there's no other greater exercise than your straight bar deadlift, but it does require, to your earlier point, a higher skill. And so to learn that skill, a lot of times it takes um, extra amount of effort to teach a client how to hip hinge without squatting. And so this is one of those things you have to kind of work through that mechanically. Um, but, the, I mean, that's the benefit of the trap bar deadlift itself is that it's it it is easier for for clients to just sit their way down and kind of be yeah. able to pick something off the ground it's just a little more functionally um i guess repeatable like people experience that a lot more like like the whole hip hinging concept is 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 kind of alien to a lot of people and yes. so it takes some time but super valuable exercise so work your way towards that yeah. Uh, is ideal. Well, Trap unfortunately, bar, oh, sorry. No, I just I, unfortunately the internet has forced us in this this game of pick. Yeah, choose. It just it's not it's not that simple. It's not one or the other. It's like and they're and they're not the same. They're they're different exercises. They are, and but they have similar benefits. And if I if my ultimate goal is to teach my client to deadlift and they're not there yet, the trap bar deadlift is amazing. Yeah, Incredible I'll tool. say this: a trap bar deadlift is more of a lower body exercise than a straight bar deadlift. You're not going to build. When we talk about the benefits of building your back and the muscle that you build in your back, you're not going to get that from a trap bar deadlift like you are a straight bar. Um, straight bar, you're going to get a little more quad, and it's a lot safer. Yep. So for people who are like for hypertrophy, like like I want to build a muscular back and i heard deadlifts are a great way to do it it's the straight bar deadlift the trap bar deadlift you'll get some but not even not even close because it's so at the the weight is on the side of your body versus in front of you. swings up what's his name that ripto? Really, ripto has a huge problem with it yeah, because of that fact but it's <laughs> i mean about that. yeah he gets angry about the trap bar yeah, that's that's but, why the, the the context matters so much yeah. uh, uh depending on the client sitting in front of me and their specific goals and their current yeah. level um I see both tools uh, I'm going to use. And so just to really, it just depends on where that person is at. And, and unfortunately, again, the internet uh, always is trying to force us into a camp of choosing one or the other or arguing for one or the other. It's have like, you guys ever pushed, because um, I know you guys have straight bar deadlift, but have you ever pushed to just train for a while on your trap bar to see how strong you can get? No. You have? You haven't? No. Uh, I, I, so for me, I've already, I'm, I'm pretty consistently about 70 pounds stronger on the trap bar. Yeah. Than I am a straight bar. Those so whatever I could deadlift me, yeah, with the straight bar, 70 more pounds can go on the trap bar. Mm -hmm. I, I use the trap bar far more for my clients than I did myself. Yeah. Yep, it, it's uh, and and where I found it for myself is maybe if I want to, if uh, like, let's say my, my low back was a little bit of fried and I was going to do some deadlift type of movement that day. 
And I'm like, uh, you know, probably don't need to do that. My, my low back's already a little exhausted. I'm going to do something that is less stressful on the mm-hmm. posterior chain. And so I, I might default to that. But uh, I'm nine times out of 10, I'm going to do a, a traditional deadlift or a variation of a, a deadlift over the trap bar personally for myself. But I see tremendous value with clients, uh, athletes, mm-hmm. um, people that, are, uh, that uh, aren't that are there yet. So uh, it's not an either or. It's a, it depends on the situation. Next question is from Burke himself. What are the pros and cons of barbell spider curls versus barbell preacher curls? I feel more from spider curls with a straight bar. Okay, so I here's why I love this exercise. The elbow position. So spider curl, if people don't know, you're leaning. You're on an incline bench, but you're leaning on your chest. So it's like you're face down so on a bench. chest supported. Yeah. And yeah, you're doing a curl, so your arms are down in front of you. In a preacher curl, you're sitting upright, and you have your arms on top of a pad to do your preacher curl. Now, here's why I love this extra, this particular question. In both exercises, the elbow position is identical. Preacher curl, spider curl, elbows in front of your body. But they're very different exercises. Now, how can that be? The spider curl, the weight, when you're using free weights, the weight is heaviest at the top. When you're doing a spider curl, it is the hardest at the top of the movement when you're fighting gravity directly. At the very bottom, there's not much resistance because you have to kind of swing the weight forward before you come up just because of the way your arm naturally curls. With a preacher curl, the weight is heaviest near the bottom, not at the top. So near the bottom is where you'll feel most the tension. Now that's important because where the tension is highest is where you're going to build most of the strength, which makes the spider curl and the preacher curl, although the elbow position is identical, very complimentary exercise. I lo- bo- those exercises they, are so complimentary. They both belong yes. in your routine. Yes, it's not this again. Another this is not an either or. They're different exercises, although, like to your point, your elbow's in the same position. You think it's a very similar exercise. It's very different. Very different feel. And so they they both belong in there. And I, this person feels it more in the, the spider, right? Is what they're probably because it's the squeeze. Yeah, the, the squeeze at the top. You can probably handle half the, half the weight you're probably dealing with. And, and, and there's just not, there's not a lot of other movements that especially free weight movements that give you that feel. No. That's what makes concentration spider, cool. Yeah. On a, like, unless you're on a cable machine or something like that, uh-huh. like you just don't feel that same type of tension at the top of, of the curl. And so, yeah, these uh, this is not uh, do one or the other. It's, it, it's, it's both of these belong in a good now, bicep. If you were to do four... Just Lowering for- in the preacher curl, ooh, that's oh, yeah. always... Yeah. At the bottom. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Just yeah. eccentrically, like, negatives doing those. Is yeah, the stretch position, yeah, you totally feel. And then a spider curl in the stretch position ain't no big deal. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, no, no big deal at all. You I'll nice tell you, if you, want, if you want a four-exercise bicep workout, that is like, this is like bodybuilding gold. I'll tell you what they are right here. <laughs> you're standing dumbbell or barbell curl. You go to your preacher curl. You go to your, you do a, a decline, excuse me, an incline curl in the stretch. And then you go to your spider curl. So you've got elbow position in all three right, different positions. And, yeah. and, yep. You've yeah. got the stretch. You've got the resistance in the stretch with the elbow in front, with the elbow behind. And then you have that peak squeeze at the top of the spider curl. Try that. If you're watching this right now and you want to go do a bicep workout, literally do it in that order. Let me know how you feel. Next question is from a Ricky five. Is it possible to over prime before a workout? Should I consider sets of priming movements, working sets for any particular body part? So priming warming up. Okay. We'll use those words interchangeably, although priming is much more targeted. So rephrase the question. If people don't know, don't know what priming means. Can you over warm up? Can you yep. do too much of a warm up? Well, yeah. Yeah, when it, when it becomes when it fatigues you, yeah, mm-hmm. you yeah, know, if, if go you to that point, you go into your workout and you're exhausted, uh, then it's not a warm up anymore. It's not really serving its purpose. All it did was fatigue you, and now that became part of your workout. So yes, you could totally do it. The way you should feel after a good priming warm up is you should feel more connected, you feel ready to go, more yeah. energized, stronger, I don't ready even to get feel into like exercise. Reps are that important. To be honest with you, in terms mm-hmm. of like the feel of it and like, not. Yeah, yeah. And like even holding positions mm-hmm. and like, I, I, it's such a feel thing for me when I'm yeah. priming, uh, that it, it's hard for me to prescribe, you know, rep count. Cause it, it varies so much. Yeah. I, what a great point, Justin. And, and for the audience so they get the own our prime and prime pro programs. So they understand this, like when we gave like time and reps and things like that, that's like to give people an, an understanding and a base to go right. off of. But the truth is. When I prime, many times it's once or twice just one really intense, good connection in that area. Totally, I might get into my ninety ninety, get all position right, right, get into that deep stretch, and then op- open up my hips by lifting my 
heel, driving the knee in, and I might just have one really good intent. Feel good, yeah. And then switch the yeah. other side, and then maybe I switch back one more time, and I'm ready to go. Like, oh, I'm good. I'm yeah, my hips, good. my hips are awake. I'm, I'm, I'm awake and I'm active. I'm ready to go. Um, I know that we prescribe a lot of times like five and five and hold for five seconds, and there, and we have all these things, but that's to give somebody who has no understanding or concept of what they're trying to do. Once you learn how to prime, and I've talked about this before. If you ever watch, uh, yeah, how I've and I've shared this on my Instagram, so I know there's there's posts of me doing this. If you go back far enough, where I have this thing where I, I get down in a really deep squat and I have a band and I I like combine like three priming movements in one. I'm yeah. down. I'm basically doing a combat stretch because I'm driving. I get myself positioned by the squat rack. I drive my like knees over. Pull, right? Yeah, I'm driving my knees open on the hips. I'm doing the reverse reverse band on my upper body. I'm tucking my chin like the zone one. Like I'm literally combining three or four different mobility moves that we would teach uh, by themselves. But and I I know how to connect to all those things, intensify really hard. I might do that for three or four reps and then I'm, I'm ready to go. You know what this question mm -hmm. reminds me of? Uh, it reminds me of, and you'll see this a lot with like, I don't know, junior high, high school coaches, or I, I used to do this. I see, I see this in martial arts classes too, where you'll do your warm up. They'll, they'll call it your warm up. And they gas everybody out. Yeah, yeah, they fatigue everybody. Yeah, and you see this with coaches too. Like, all right, guys, we're going to warm up, you know? And by the time the kids are done with a warm up, they're like, <laughs> they're sweating. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> not just sweating, they're like dead. They can yeah. barely do anything. And they go to try to play. And they like, have terrible performance the rest of practice. Terrible. In fact, some of them would almost brag about it. Like, you can't even make it through a warm up, you know, type of deal. Like, that's not the point of a warm up. The yeah. warm up is not supposed to be the workout, there's working out. And there's warming up and a warm up or priming is to make the workout more effective, not to take away from it or replace it. If that's your idea of a warm up, you're doing it wrong. Next question is from Mac Conrad. What are some early signs of overtraining or too much weekly intensity? Early sign. I'm glad they said early signs because there's some obvious signs later on. But for me, an early sign is disrupted sleep. I, I will notice that before anything else where I'm pushing it a little too hard and I find I get a little restless mm. when oh, I'm asleep. I, I would make the case that uh, just uh, over really sore. That's one of the that's first. That's a great one. That's like yeah. one of the first. Actually, that's a great one. Yeah. When, I, when you, uh, I mean, in, 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 if I've applied the perfect amount of uh, intensity in, in for me is I can feel that I worked out. So I get a little bit of a soreness if I like kind of flex the muscle. I'm like, oh yeah, I, I, I worked the uh, arms out yesterday. Or, Ooh, I, I definitely worked my quads. I can feel them, right? But not to where I go to sit down and I'm like, oh, yeah. or I go to get out of the car and I'm like, oh, like th that to me, that that's a that's an early sign. Like, yep, I did wait. And sometimes uh, I'll feel that on the the day right day right after. If I, right after the next day, I'm already feeling really sore. I go, I what I say to myself, not what I used to say when I was 20. I go, oh, good workout. Yeah. <laughs> now I, now I go, shit, I did more than I Too needed far. to. Yeah, did I did more than I needed to? I could have done less and progressed at the same speed, maybe even faster. That's how I think now. It's like, so the, the, the first thing I'm looking at is how sore am I from that workout? I do not want to feel really sore. I want to feel just like, yeah, I, I knew I worked out yesterday in that muscle, but not when I, I'm moving. I'm like, oh, ah, or it hurts to yeah, touch. Yeah, no, That's I'm glad you said soreness. That is the first sign. Uh, yeah. you, sh you know what you should feel after your workout? You should feel either no soreness or the kind of soreness you have to search for to find, where you're kind of like stretch and go, oh. Yeah, it's just more of a tightness yeah, than like, soreness. Oh, I could tell I worked out. Yeah. I think I worked out. You should not, it shouldn't be so obvious where you're like, I, I can't move or don't touch me there. That, like that means. This is why I love the, the, the saying yeah. that we always talk about, which is do as little as work as possible to elicit the most amount of change. And so I'm always actually looking for that. So I'm looking for like, can I, how many sets, reps, and intensity does it take to not feel sore from it? And then I know like, ooh, maybe I can do a tiny bit more. I'm like, yeah. I'm trying to find that sweet spot of what does a workout look like to where I don't really feel sore the next day. And yep. then knowing that, okay, maybe I can handle a tiny bit more of progressive overload in the next workout. And that's what I'm searching for. Where as a kid, when I was younger, we used to measure the success of a workout by how sore we were, yep. which is so the opposite of how I think now. It's like, if I feel even remotely close to that right away, I'm like, God damn it. 
Why did I do that much? I could have, I'm right away in my head. And by the way, too, you should be thinking like this. I'm thinking of the work and I'm like, yep, it was that fucking last exercise. Didn't need to do that. <laughs> or it's like, yep. When I thought about when there was a moment, there's always that moment in everybody's workout where you're like, oh, I should do five more. Yeah, oh, let's throw on another more. plate or let and I felt something shift. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or you, you feel something like that. Like your back's yeah, tweaked. Yeah, the next it's like, you know what? It. And it's like, so I'm always going back in the workout going like, yeah, I, I didn't need to do that. I, I had a feeling I could have just done that and I would have felt great. And because I, my ego drove me to do that. And now I'm, this is how I feel. So that's great what point. I'm paying attention to first. Look, if you like mind pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. We have a lot and they're all free. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 